Hey students of statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker with another video today focusing on three-dimensional moments. And this links into out of our engineering statics textbook section 4.5. And just a little reminder here on three-dimensional moments, our right hand rule is going to come in really important. Okay, so the right hand rule. And we have two different forms of right hand rule. Um, I call this, um, the one on the left here, our three finger right hand rule, and the one on the right, our slide then curl. And with the three finger right hand rule, I prefer to always go with the first vector and the cross product, right? Just reminding our brains here, we're looking at sum of, excuse me, not sum of forces, but sum of moments. Sum of moments as a vector is equal to R cross F. Always R cross F, never F cross R, otherwise you get a flip with your sign. So we're going to take our first vector is our index finger, our second vector, which is F, is our middle finger, and then your thumb, right, becomes this axis of rotation. And the cool thing about it is that the rotation is actually always in the direction you think of in your uh, direction of the force. So using um, our slide then curl over on the right hand side of the screen, you can slide your fingers along R, curl them in the direction of F, and then we get this really convenient curl along our fingers right here. So there's that rotational curl to show what direction that moment is rotating in around your axes, which is the thumb, right? So your thumb in both cases is the axes of rotation. It is a vector, it's just a rotational vector around your thumb in the direction of either your fingertips or the force vector. Okay, so it's just a little refresher on the right hand rule, three fingers slide and curl. So applying this to a three dimensional problem, we could set up the following scenario. So here we have a three dimensional axis system and the plane of the page is gonna be our X axis and our Y axis and our Z axis here is gonna be coming out of the page toward us. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a cube in this space, okay? So probably easiest to draw that here in the XY to start and bring it forward um, here off the Z axis. So another square here, connect the corners, there's a cube, okay? And we're not gonna give you dimensions for this right now. We're just kind of talking about this, this three-dimensional cube in space. Uh, let's give each corner a name. We're gonna call the origin down here. A over here, um, point B, coming around clockwise, C and D. Okay, so those four points are in the X, Z plane. Coming up to the top here, let's go along the Y axis as E. Now I'm gonna skip F because we're gonna have a bunch of forces labeled F. So we're gonna go from E to G and then H and then I. All right, so there's three different um, forces that we're going to analyze using this cube. One of those will be F1 along this top edge right here. Okay, there is my force one. Next force I'll have is actually going to continue on this line CB, but kind of behind the x axis. So this would be F2. And then we could also look at along the z axis here. Okay, so three separate forces. And on all of these, we are gonna look at their sum of moments around point A, okay? So um, looking at here on this example, in words, we want to find the moment arms, in there, moment arms, and the moment vector around point A. All right, and again, our moment equation, sum of moments as a vector is equal to R cross F. And I guess officially, if I'm only talking about one moment at a time, I probably wouldn't throw in that moment, excuse me, I wouldn't throw in that summation yet. Um, but as a multiple of these, we're gonna have multiple moments. And so we'll have multiple moments all around point A. All right, so physically looking at these three forces. Uh, the first one we could look at here is force one. And so keeping in mind that our moment arm is our R vector, right, R cross F. 
And this moment arm always starts at our point of interest, which is point A, and it's going to finish the line of action of that force. Okay, so our first moment arm is going to go right up along this y axis, and so this is going to be, we could call that R1. We could call also call it, if we, call it if we wanted to RAE. That's the two points that it runs between. But that would be our moment arm, connecting our point of interest, point A, with the line of action of that force. And then for force two, uh, we need to connect again from point A over to that force. So this would be R2, same thing as RAB. Okay. Now, force three. Hmm, force three. Right, keep in mind that moments are basically the rotational tendency of a force. How much rotational tendency does F3 cause around point A? Turns out it doesn't cause any rotational tendency. Now, if you did want to draw an R vector, it's not incorrect to draw an R vector. We could draw an R vector basically paralleling F3 here. We could label that if we wanted to R3, which is the same thing as RAD. But when you cross two parallel vectors, right, keep in mind, moments come from cross products, cross two parallel vectors, um, cross products look for what is perpendicular. There is nothing that's perpendicular between R3 and F3. Therefore, there is no moment from F3. Now, that doesn't mean that F3 isn't still pushing on point A. It's still doing that. But it is not rotating around point A. All right, so let's go ahead and look at our overall equation um, for these, bringing this all into equation form. So sum of moments around point A is going to be equal to... Uh, for F1, we have R, A, E as a vector crossed into F1. For F2, we could put that in parentheses if we wanted to, um, plus um, R, um, A, B, which is a vector crossed into F2. And then I'm going to go on to the next line here. Um, we have the moment from F3, which is basically zero, and I'll go ahead and write it out here. R, A, D crossed with F3 as a vector. And we can just cross this out and say this goes to zero as R, A, D is parallel to F3. And so if it's parallel, you'll get no moment um, out of that cross product. So that's how we could set those up. Now, Let's take a look, using our right-hand rule, at the directions of these moments. Now, all these moments are going to come out of point A right here, all right? And I'm going to label the first one M1, right? That's going to be the moment out of force 1. And then the other moment we have coming out of force 2, we'll label that with M2. So let's look at M1 first. All right, so using either your three-finger right-hand rule or your slide and curl, see if you can go ahead and get the directions. Draw the vectors for the moment. Keep in mind that moment vectors we tend to draw with a double-headed arrow. Okay, double-headed arrow. And again, that, that conforms to your thumb, right? Your thumb in either the three-finger or the slide and curl is that axis of rotation. So hit pause if you'd like to and go ahead and draw those vectors. Give them a, give them a shot. All right, so we're back from your pause, or you're a slacker and you didn't hit pause. Uh, all right, so if we then slide our fingers up along the AE line right here, and then curl them over to the right, right, that's the direction that F1 is going, we find that my thumb is going to go into the screen, and we're going to end up with a moment from 1, we could call this M1 vector, right, fundamentally, F1 causes rotation around point A, around an axis going through point A, and in the direction that um, basically F1 is pushing over um, to your right. Let's look at F2. So here again, we're going to slide our fingers, our three finger with our index finger, over from A to B, and then pushing our, um, pushing our fingers or pushing our middle finger into the screen, we're going to find out that the moment from 2 is actually going upwards right here. Okay, so this is M2. 
I'm going to move this M1 label a little bit just so I can confusion between those labels. And so we have a bit of rotation essentially around the y-axis, a bit of rotation around the negative z-axis. Now with moment vectors just like force vectors, you could if you wanted to go ahead and find a resultant vector. I'll put it in gray here just because we didn't ask about it. But we could put a double-headed arrow up in this direction and basically the total amount of rotational tendency from F1 and F2 is going to be on that diagonal back in that um, a bit of a y component and a bit of a negative z component. Okay, so that is how we would apply our knowledge of the right-hand rule to three-dimensional vectors. Now, as we do this, the easiest way to do this mathematically is to actually do determinants for each and every one of these moments. Okay, so you'd set up a determinant for RAE crossed with F1, another determinant from RAB crossed with F2, and then, you know, basically take your full cross product, then collect together all of your X terms, all of your Y terms, all of your Z terms, and end up with the total moment around point A, right? Which is again, represent that gray vector there where we get multiple components in that resultant moment vector. All right, thanks for your hard work on this. Hope you're having a great day. Mm -hmm.